hate you. Do you think you're being abused? I don't look at him as an abuser. You admit that you put your hands around her neck. You admit that you bit her on the face. A couple in crisis. Would you say this is a horrible relationship, an average relationship? It's a horrible relationship. Then why are you in it? He's the best I've ever had and the worst. Will their toxic love survive? I don't think anybody else is going to want me. You need to move on or you're going to wind up in prison. I want to go on record right now. You're in danger. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. Let's count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Yesterday, we met Jennifer, her best friend Heather, and Heather's boyfriend Colin. Now, Jennifer wrote in, scared for her friend, saying she fears the only way Heather is leaving her toxic and abusive relationship is in a body bag. Now, Heather admits that Colin has choked her, bitten her, shoved her, and called her terrible names. But despite all of that, she is adamant that he loves her and deep down is really a good person. Now, Colin admits he gets so angry that he blacks out and doesn't even remember what he has done, but he says it's a two-way street, and Heather is guilty of knowing exactly which buttons to push and when to push them. Here's what happened yesterday. My best friend Heather is in one of the most toxic relationships I've ever witnessed in my entire life. Shut it up! Shut your mouth! He has choked me, grabbed me by my hair, dragged me on the floor, threw me against the wall. He's damaged literally everything, her car, the entire apartment. He's done absolutely everything but shoot Heather. I get home to this, look at my get out! My biggest fear is when I will bury my best friend. Are you afraid for your safety? Or are you afraid for your life? It's more everybody else that's worried about my safety for my life. You said he's too obsessed with me to kill me. What do you mean by that? I just think he loves me too much that he'd actually do anything really bad to me. And what do you call bad? He's never beat me up. Has he dragged you by the hair? Bitten you in the face? Stripped you naked and poured water all over you? Yes. But other than that, it's gone pretty well. Just what do you think about what she's saying? It's very um, eye-opening for me that someone would stay in a relationship like that. Heather constantly pokes me until I explode. You got so much <laughs> You got Shut nothing. Up. No, I'm not. She used to put her hands on me, closed fists, open hands. I put my hands around her throat. I didn't squeeze, but part of me, like, wanted to. I don't think I'm in love with Heather like I used to be. You say you admit to getting physical with her. You put your hands around her neck twice. You've pushed her. How is that okay with you? It's not. She's said to us she wanted to be careful what she said because she didn't want it to come across like you were some kind of a monster we wouldn't be here if one of us or either both of us was a monster at some point he came home accused me of cheating and threw me against the wall and choked me i never hit her i just spun her to the floor by the shoulders i called her heartless and i left you say she provokes you give me an example calls me a low life piece of or something or worthless or just demeans you demeaning yeah absolutely yeah. and why do you provoke him i have out of anger when i was just mad you talked about social media and no selfies and you can't wear certain clothing do you feel controlled or is that okay with you no i feel controlled Jennifer, you say that he has stolen Heather's underwear. Absolutely. Um, he'll go through her things and get rid of things that she might wear for somebody else. Is that true? Nope. That's a lie. You, you haven't That's done that. That's a damn lie. What happened Thanksgiving of 2016? He was speeding, and I wanted to get out of the car, and he grabbed my face, and he bit it. Do you recall that? I recall getting punched and slapped in the face repeatedly nonstop, and so I locked the brakes up right there in the road and grabbed her for some 
reason uh, bit her on the damn face. Why'd you bite her? I don't know. I mean, why'd you think of it? Because I wasn't going to hit her. And how was the trip here? It sucked. It was a nightmare. How so? I, uh, I don't let anyone control me, and I've never been in a controlling situation. And even I felt like I was controlled the whole way here. Um, about 23 hours in to the trip, we canceled and had an emergency stop in Nevada and called it off. We weren't going to come. Actually, we weren't coming. And I'd already called home to my mom, like, coming home, I'm done. I've never seen anything like this in person. He's never done anything that's in front of me. On the phone, I've heard things, but never in front of me. But to watch how fast it happened, but I no longer felt like I was safe. I didn't want to be in the car with him. And I was just started crying in the backseat because I couldn't believe that it was, this all happened over, we had disconnected with a producer on the phone because we hit Nevada and lost signal. And Heather nicely said, and I'm not here just to protect Heather. I, there have been times where I don't know that I don't feel she's in the right, but she, I was very proud of her, how she's handled this whole trip. And she said to him, can you please just text so-and-so and say, you don't want your hair cut. You just want it trimmed. And it was just World War III from there. And it was hard to watch because then they're both screaming at each other. We're going down the interstate. We pulled over, got gas. I told her in the, in the, bathroom i'm done i can't do this anymore like i i have a kid to go home to i don't feel like i'm safe and i i no longer felt after watching that that there was hope in the situation i felt that it was call it off let's go we're done we're wasting our time okay so what made you feel unsafe how violent he got uh, he was screaming in her face while she's trying to drive we were both pretty uncomfortable driving just because you're in a car you've never been in before in a place you've never been in before and um he was trying to he, he was upset that we wouldn't let him drive so he was trying to provoke the both of us and just how fast he went from zero to 60 was it was very um it, it was raw it was hard to watch and when the second we sat down in the hotel room i just said i'm so disappointed in you i said i'm disappointed that you think that this is what you deserve well Here's a little of what happened. Shut the up! We're not doing this! Shut up! Shut up! Shut the mouth! I'm tired of listening to you yell at me! Shut the up! And do what I asked you to do! It happened that fast, and that was all because she said, Can you please pick up your phone and just send them a text message letting them know what it is you want to do? And he refused to do that because he felt like it was for her, not for him. Well, Jennifer says Colin has totally destroyed Heather's self-esteem and made her hate her own body. Uh, she says she's afraid that Heather, if she stays with Colin, uh, she thinks she does it because no one else will love her and that she will continue to be in danger. I've got some questions for both of these two when we come back. Would you say this is a horrible relationship, an average relationship? It's a horrible relationship. Why are you in it? He's the best I've ever had and the worst. And later... My next step, if they stay together, is to be writing my speech for when I have to say goodbye to her body. Tomorrow, mom claims her model student daughter... I do not vape anymore. I found her vaping on her own phone. ...is a Jekyll and Hyde. She sneaks a boy into the house, then gets high and drove into a ditch. Marissa has stolen my car at least nine times. If I looked at half of your resume, you are very impressive. If I looked at the other half, I'd put the cuffs on you. That's tomorrow. Then on Friday, it's a Dr. Phil classic that viewers pick. This show has even more relevance today than it did when we aired it seven years ago. Living beyond your means. I'm talking to you. You got cats howling, dogs barking, phones ringing, my stomach hurt watching the tape. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely suffers from low self esteem because she truly believes everything that he says to her. Colin has made comments that since I gained weight, the performance between us has not been as good as it used to be. Colin absolutely does not want Heather to feel sexy at all because he's afraid that he will lose her to another man. But Heather, I I I'm really curious uh, about your 
position in this, and I'm going to tell the two of you what I think very, very clearly. But first off, you didn't write in for help. She did. Correct. So whatever was happening, you were kind of stuck or willing or okay with or whatever, and you're not very expressive or animated about it today. So is this relationship basically okay with you? Would you say this is a horrible relationship, an average relationship, a great relationship? How, how do you see this relationship? It's a horrible relationship. It's toxic on both ends. Okay, then how how are you okay being in it and why are you in it do you believe that it's the best you can do but we're just being honest here i mean just tell me the truth he's the best i've ever had and the worst and you say he's told you that you're not gonna find anybody else so you better be glad you've got what you got yeah I don't think I don't think anybody else is going to want me no but it's not just that I don't feel the same towards him either but I do still love him and I really do believe that if we each got help we could have what we used to have cuz we used to be really happy And how would you rate this relationship? I mean, it, on a scale from horrible to average to great. Horrible. Why are you in it? I miss what we used to have. It was beautiful. At this point, you both agree this is horrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I believe this is dangerous for both of you for different reasons. Y you guys have created this new normal that isn't normal at all. It's not normal to do the things you're doing to endure the pain that you're enduring. And I, I, I want to talk to both of you alone for a minute uh, to tell you what I think. But I, I, I'm going to tell you, I think this is a toxic, dangerous relationship. And I, I think if it continues on this path, that there's nothing good going to come out of this relationship for you or for you. I, I want to talk to both of you alone. I, I, I'll start uh, with Colin. So we're going to take a break, and I'm going to excuse you two and talk to Colin. Then I'll excuse Colin and talk to you. So when we come back, I'm just going to be talking to Colin by himself. We'll be right back. You need to get out of this relationship. You need to put her in your rearview mirror. You need to move on or you're going to wind up in a penitentiary. We're here to learn the secret to a... Well, I'm back with Colin. I have excused Jennifer and Heather because I wanted to talk to Colin just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I, I just want to have a chance to just kind of have a man-to-man -man conversation with you here. Um, I know that you haven't had a good ride through the early part of your life. And I understand that. Uh, I'm sorry for that for you because I'm going to tell you there is no excuse for ever putting your hands on a woman in anger. I don't care what it, I don't care if she's hitting you, slapping you, going off on you, whatever. If that's the case, you don't hit her back. You don't bite her. If you have to, you stop the car and get out and walk away. And this is a dangerous relationship for you. And I'm going to tell you why. You're going to wind up in prison. And just what you admit to 
right now, you can go to prison. You admit that you've put your hands around her neck. You admit that you've bit her on the face. You admit uh, uh, 10 things in here. You need to get out of this relationship. You need to put her in your rearview mirror. You need to move on or you're going to wind up in a penitentiary. Now, I've been doing this for 45 years, and I can tell you dozens of guys that I've talked to that did not listen to me, and they wound up in the penitentiary for 10, 20 years. I had a guest on this stage that I told this, and he went backstage and got mouthy in the green room and shoved a, a, a woman, and he spent six months in jail here before he even got out of town. You have a rage problem. It, it is clear to me you have a rage problem. You have a trust problem. You have a rage problem. You don't know how to check that rage, and it when it gets out of control, the, the cops are going to get called by her or her friend or somebody else. They're going to arrest you, and you're going to do time. And you're going to be standing there in that orange jumpsuit with those paper flip-flops on in a six-by-eight cell saying, he told me. He told me, and I didn't listen. It was a toxic relationship. I should have got out of it and got myself straight before I ever got in another relationship. It's just somebody you met. Move on. It was good for a while. It's not anymore. It has become toxic and dangerous, and you're going to hurt her and ruin your life. What do you think about what I'm saying? It's hard to uh, wrap my head around. <clears throat> I'm already trying to picture it. And it's almost impossible. I know it's not impossible, but just thinking of it in my head right now, it's, it's not what I want. But sometimes what you want and what you need are two different things. You think you can control it? I would like to. I would like to somehow get some help or get something, some way, because, I mean, not everybody's like that. Most people aren't like that. But you're getting help, right? I haven't in a while. Not well, since, I'll get you some help. Not since COVID started. I'll get, I'll get you some, some COVID-sensitive help. I will get you a, a therapist set up through Doctor On Demand. It's our company, so I know it's a quality one. Jay and I started this company, and I'll set you up 10 sessions immediately to start with rage and anger and healing these things. You don't need anger management. You need to heal the wounds that are within you that are driving the anger. The anger is not your issue. It's the pain that's behind the anger that are your issues. And I will get you help with that. I will make that gift of me to you to, to help you with that. Because I'm not here to judge you, I'm here to help you. And I will help you with that. I'm telling you, you need to protect yourself. You've been forewarned. I'm, I'm just, that's my advice to you. And I'm offering you that professional help. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll take it and run with it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say goodbye to Colin right now. And I really hope that he listened to everything that I've said, even though I get that it's hard to wrap your head around. After the break, I'm going to talk to Heather. We'll be right back. Do you think you're being abused? I don't like to say he's an abuser. I don't look at him as an abuser. You are in an abusive relationship. Closed captioning provided by... Well, Heather and Colin both agree that their love is completely toxic. I asked them both how they would rate their relationship on a scale of horrible to great. They both said horrible. Now, I, I dismissed Colin. I, I spent the last little bit of time talking to him one-on-one -on -one and told him just man-to-man -man what I thought the situation was. I've asked Robin to join. As you know, my wife Robin has made it her life's mission to help domestic violence survivors. Uh, she and our foundation, When Georgia Smiled, are devoted to helping victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse and ensuring women and children live healthy, safe, and joy-filled lives. So I, I've asked her to, to join us because of, of her passion here. You've been listening to the situation. 
is is Heather in an abusive relationship? Is oh, this a close call? Not a close call. Yes, very much so. Actually, in the 20 years that Philip has been doing this show, and we've been focusing on domestic violence, and uh, the reason I created When Georgia Smiled, and uh, because I'm so passionate about helping women just like you, of all of the shows we've done, I have to say, your circumstance, he clicked off the extreme in every in every example. Do you think you're being abused? Like, I don't, I don't like to say he's an abuser. I don't look at him as an abuser. When we're talking about an abusive relationship, you are in an abusive relationship. Well, here's Colin's alleged physical abuse. According to Heather, uh, he's been physical 15 or 20 times. He's bit your face, left bruises and whelp, choked, grabbing you by the neck, slapped your head, elbowed your arm repeatedly, dragged by your hair, thrown into the wall, pushed around, grabbed forcibly, ripped your clothing, wouldn't let you leave the apartment, threatened suicide, which is emotional extortion, property damage more than 50 times. According to Jennifer, in reality, he's just beating the crap out of her. Bruises, black and blue eyes, and th there's a firearm in the house. When she says it's extreme, th this isn't a close call. And we got to witness how quick he was to to show the the anger and and the verbal abuse in the car. And and what really scared me, Philip, was as we were watch as I sat there and we were watching this unfold he showed no remorse uh, screaming and and how scared you were he showed no remorse for that and then robin's aspire initiative which is an educational program that she's put together with the help of many professionals to educate people as to what um emotional abuse is and how people act within it uh she lists reasons that people stay in these relationships it was my fault I got mad at him. He apologized and promised it wouldn't happen again. It doesn't happen all the time. I know he loves me and I love him. We have a lot of great times together. I didn't want to leave because of the children. I don't have a job. Nobody else wants me. I'm afraid he will kill me. And then here are your reasons. I push his buttons. He's truly sorry. He is remorseful. Colin has gotten better and hasn't gotten physical with me recently. We truly love each other so much. Beginning the relationship with most romantic boyfriend. I fear I won't find someone else to love me or want to be with me. If I cheated, I truly believe he had killed me or the other man. You're almost, these things on the left were things that are from the literature over a probably a 30-year body of research. So these were not done for today, and you matched them up almost perfectly. That's, it's, it's just battered woman syndrome. Do you believe me? I don't think it's that bad. Like, I just, I feel like it's came off way worse than it really is. Tomorrow. Mom claims her model student daughter. I do not vape anymore. I found her vaping on her own phone. Is a Jekyll and Hyde. She sneaks a boy into the house, then gets high and drove into a ditch. First, I saw my car at least nine times. If I looked at half of your resume, you are very impressive. If I looked at the other half, I'd put the cuffs on you. That's tomorrow. Then, on Friday, it's a Dr. Phil classic that viewers pick. This show has even more relevance today than it did when we aired it seven years ago. Living beyond your means. I'm talking to you. You got cats howling, dogs barking, phones ringing, my stomach hurt watching the tape. <laughs> That's Friday. Closed captioning provided by... When you love your pet like family, you want to feed them like family. That's why every Blue Buffalo recipe is made with the finest natural ingredients. You'll find blue wherever you buy pet food. I think you need to get out of this relationship right now. You two bring out the worst in each other. And I can't tell you the number of women I have talked to 
where it's gone from verbal, never having been touched, to the most dire consequences you can imagine. Just a warning, what I'm about to show you contains graphic images. Say Jeremy will beat me at least once a week. He raped me while I was pregnant. He started chasing me. All I knew that I needed to do was get away from him. I'm like doused with like a big pot of oil. And he's like, that's what you get, bitch. And they gave me 48 hours to live. Brad shot me in the stomach. He started chopping me in the back of the head with a machete. He reached for a bottle and struck me upside the head, knocking me unconscious. Every bone in my face had been broken. He threw gasoline at me, grabbed a candle, and I went up in flames. We saw my dad shoot my mom in the back and stomach. There was a moment when he said to the children, say goodbye to your mother because you're never going to see her again. I remember my mom begging for somebody to call 911, and there was nothing I could do to help her. But I want to go on record right now. I'm telling you, you're in danger. I'm telling you, you need to get out of this relationship. And if, if I were you, I, I would get out of it right now and I would go somewhere he couldn't find me because the vast majority of serious injuries or murders occur in the two-week period where women leave their abusers. It's called separation assault. We've researched it. We found you a, a place to go where you can stay, where he can't find you. But I'm telling you, I believe that your life is in danger. I believe you need to get out of this relationship, and I believe you need to get out of it right now. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. Do you, do you believe me? I don't think it's that bad. Like, I just, I feel like it's came off way worse than it really is. You would never do that. I have told her, your only way out, if you think you can do this by yourself, is in a body bag. I don't think there'll be a survivor story. I think it'll be in a body bag. And I think my next step, if they stay together, is to be writing my speech from when I have to say goodbye to her body. And that's, that's real. But you've been told, somebody has looked you in the eye and told you you're in danger. I was having a really hard time with it. I didn't want him to come off as a monster on TV, and I feel like that's exactly what happened. I, I didn't bark at him. I told him, I'm, I know you've been through a lot in your early life. That needs to be healed. I offered him professional help. He took it. We ended on really good terms. If you don't believe me, at least tell me that you hear me. I hear you. I do. Well, I'm going to let you go backstage and give this some thought, and we'll check back with you a, a little later. And right now, we're going to switch gears with my next guest, who proves it's never too late to follow your dreams. Her inspiring story next. I came here in the hope that we would get help so we could get back together. Not for some another person to tell us I'm not to be together. Once she knew Dr. Phil wasn't going to say, you guys should stay together, it was over. Dr. Phil, he started talking about getting arrested and prison and all that. As a child, my next guest, Lynn, dreamed of becoming a paramedic. But life had other plans, and instead she got married and became a stay-at-home mom to five daughters. Then, at 52 years old, Lynn decided it was time to pursue her goal. And at 56, she finally did become a paramedic. But now Lynn says she's facing an unexpected challenge with coworkers. Take a look. 
I've been a paramedic now for two years. I'm coming in with a 26-year-old female. At this age, being a paramedic can be physically demanding and so intense that it's literally an adrenaline rush. And we're going to go to the hospital. One of the most bothersome things about my job is that I am older than 90% of my crew. Because of my age difference, I have been nicknamed Damn Damn. At this time in my life, I still feel very youthful and vibrant. I really want to look as youthful and energetic as I feel. When I look in the mirror, the things that I notice the most are the bags under my eyes, crow's feet, fine lines around my mouth. And one of the things that bothers me the most is that number 11 that you get behind your eyebrow, and I, I don't know how to fix it. I don't see myself retiring anytime soon. I have the energy of someone 25 years younger, but now I'd like to also look the part. I'm got a good 10 years in you. Happy and out. Well, Lynn is joining me virtually. Uh, it's nice to meet you, and thank you for the hard work you're doing out there, especially right now during this pandemic. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Dr. Phil, and it's a pleasure meeting you, too. Why were you so determined to be a paramedic? Um, it, I just knew in junior high that that's what I wanted to do, and I'm finally here, and I'm enjoying it. I understand in high school you were told only men could be paramedics. How did that make you feel? Well, I was devastated because I really thought that I had my life planned out. And uh, even though it took years, and even though I started late in life, and even though my colleagues joke and call me Gam Gam, I'm happy to finally be doing this. Well, you know, we're only limited by those boundaries that we put around ourselves. And it's very clear that you didn't let people put boundaries around you. You decided, look, I'm going to decide what I do. And it's so interesting that people have a personal truth sometimes that limits themselves, and you didn't do that. And, Lynn, at 56, what was it like uh, going into this line of work at, at that age when you have to be so active? Well, most of my colleagues are in their 20s and 30s, and it is a very physically demanding job. And I often wonder if sometimes they don't see me, my colleagues, as maybe their mother or their grandmother. And I would rather that they focus on my skills and not so much my appearance. Right. Well, help is here because joining us in the audience, I want you to meet Allison Dayette. Now, she is a beauty expert and spokesperson for the beauty brand number seven. So, Allison, thank you for, for being here. Thank you. Do you think you can help Lynn? She's doing the job. She's equal to it, but she wants to improve her appearance so they don't focus on that so much. I sure can, Dr. Phil. And Lynn, you following your dream, no matter how long it took, is so inspiring. So let's get you looking as young as you feel. But first off, tell me what skin concerns bother you most. Well, let's start with these wrinkles that are on my forehead. They seem to be getting deeper and more prominent every year. And then I have these crow's feet around my eyes, especially when I smile. They also seem to be multiplying and also growing more deeper as well. So you don't really have a skincare regimen just yet? Um, actually, I do, but in my line of work, unfortunately, sometimes it's hard to follow that. We're about to change that with a product that I absolutely love and use myself, Number 7 Laboratories Line Correcting Booster Serum. It's an at-home treatment for people who want to diminish deep lines and wrinkles but aren't ready to try or can't afford injectables. Well, Allison, what's in the product that makes it so special? Dr. Phil, the secret is its concentrated, powerful peptide technology, which helps skin recover some of the elasticity we lose as we age. And Lynn, you'll be happy to know, our clinical study has shown that this serum may help you look younger with a visible reduction in the appearance of wrinkles that may start in as little as one week. So, Lynn, do you think this product could help your coworkers drop this granny business? Yeah, I think it sounds wonderful, Dr. Phil. Thank you. Lynn, here's more great news. You can find it at Walmart and Walmart.com for less than $35. But since you're so busy with your paramedic duties, number seven is going to give you a year's supply. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. All right, so you don't even have to go shopping for it. And a special thanks to Allison Dayette. Well, Heather and Colin are backstage. We've kept them separate and have given them some time to think about what I said. So what will this couple decide to do? I'm going to find out with you right after the break.
captioning provided by... When you love your pet like family, you want to feed him like family. That's why every Blue Buffalo recipe is made with the finest natural ingredients. You'll find Blue wherever you buy pet food. Get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on DrPhil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Now, my team is talking to Heather and Colin back. stage and we'll take you there in just a moment but first i want to thank all of my guests for being here today and if you at home want to have your own doctor on demand go to the google play store or apple app store and download the doctor on demand app now for more information about today's show you can continue this conversation because it doesn't stop when the show ends you can go to drphil.com uh, and you can find the aspire initiative there uh, a link. It's a link to whengeorgiasmile.org. And that's where all of this educational information is. And you also will find needed hotline numbers and everything in the Aspire Initiative to help you or your, yourself or others uh, that are in a, a violent situation. And by the way, when you call these hotline numbers, they don't pressure you to give your name, your address or anything. They just listen. They give you resources. They give you options. So don't feel like, oh, I'm crossing a bridge too far. I, I, there's no coming back from this. Just know they're there to help you. Um, you'll find us talking about this on Facebook, Twitter, even Instagram, kind of all around. And don't forget, we have a new Facebook page. It's Dr. Phil Fanatics. It's the only place that super fans go to discuss episodes uh, and gain access to Dr. Phil News First. And a lot of good ideas are exchanged there. Somebody will say, well, I think this, but I have a similar situation. And somebody else will say, I'm five years ahead of you because my kids are gone. Here's what worked for me. And I've seen a really lot of good support and help there. So I really love the way that's all working out. We'll see you next time. Be safe. Without her, it's just not anything I ever pictured or could even have imagined a couple of years ago if you just said this is what's going to happen. But now I'm standing here crying and feeling like the crazy one. I pictured a lot for us. Family, kids, just our lives. Dr. Phil, he started talking about getting arrested and prison and all that. Like, I mean, he started to think, like, what have I done? You have a rage problem. When it gets out of control, the, the cops are going to get called, but you're going to do time. And you're going to be standing there in that orange jumpsuit with those paper flip-flops on in a six-by-eight cell set. He told me, and I didn't listen. That just scares the hell out of me. I believe he knows what he's talking about. I should probably heed his warning. I think I need to give it a shot.
<laughs> I'm just really upset because I came here in the hope that we would get help for ourselves so we could get back together. Not present another person and tell us them not to be together. What are your thoughts when Dr. Phil says your life is in danger? It hurt to hear and it is eye opening. But at the same time, like, I just, I don't, I just think everything sounded a lot worse than what it really is. Hello, are you feeling right now? I'm just feeling really upset right now. Yeah, I know it was a lot, and you know, we do want to make sure that your safety is number one, and that when you leave here, you will be leaving alone without COVID. That is what we are advising, and we, we can't facilitate friends to you to see each other. Okay, no, I understand. Dr. Phil and Robin, they're taking this very seriously, and this is what we think is best. Okay. All right, thank you. I wanted to be able to see him, even if it was just for a second, but I, I knew we'd probably fly home separately. I don't see it as severe and scary as everybody else is taking it. We weren't off the stage yet when Heather was already uh, reaching out to Colin. It was pretty frustrating to see how quickly they were in contact with each other. Everything that Dr. Phil had said, it was just out, all out the window. You'll see that she's crying the entire time, when in all reality, she's crying because she thinks that he's gonna break up with her or leave her. He's having a really hard time with it. I didn't want him to come off as a monster. I once she knew Dr. Phil wasn't gonna say, you guys should stay together, it was over. She didn't, she's, she just let everything go in one ear, not the other. I can't tell you the number of women I have talked to where it's gone from verbal, never having been touched, to the most dire consequences you can imagine. She was pissed off when they played the video of all the burn survivors and the girl who was shot. You know, you could see the audience start breaking out into tears and she was mad and felt it was dramatic. It wasn't dramatic. What it was is it was real. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. Do you believe me? I don't think it's that bad. Like I just I feel like it's came off way worse than it really is. It's pretty confusing that you could be told face to face by Dr. Phil. Someone with